hello, hello. We thank you for tuning in to You Talk, our very first episode of You Talk. For those of you that are trying to figure out what You Talk is all about, it's our opportunity to connect with our young people. We have the millennials, we have an area where we deal with Generation Z, and also an area where we're dealing with the young alphas. Today, we have a phenomenal guest that's going to bless our lives in an awesome way. She's going to come to us and she's going to share with us about Banking 101. I want to introduce to some of you all and present to the rest of you all, Miss Tierra Brown. She's going to share with us a little bit about herself. And after she shares about herself, what's ultimately going to take place is she is going to start answering some questions for us. So as those of you that are moving into uh, acquiring banking uh, interaction and banking accounts, she's going to tell you all the ins and outs about that. And she's going to give you some insight that you might not know and some things that would actually help you to move forward in the future. At this time, we're going to bring to the stage and introduce to everyone, Ms. Tierra Brown. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Tierra Brown. I've been working in the banking industry for about six to seven years. Um, I've been in corporate for about 10. So I've been in the financial services industry for a total of 10 years. Um, so my background primarily is, of course, banking. I started off as a teller and I worked my way up. Um, I worked at numerous banks. Uh, I was at uh, Wells Fargo as well as Bank of America in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've held many uh, titles since then. So I've been a teller. I've been a project manager. Um, now I am a little bit higher up in, in the ranks and I've, I've converted over to tech in, in change management uh, within the bank. So I'm in charge of all technology deployments, um, anything that we'll develop for um, mobile banking, anything you can think of um, when you uh, deposit money um, via your app. Um, I'm responsible for that technology. So uh, that's a little bit about my background, but I've, I'm familiar with the bank from the teller all the way up into this, its technology. Well, we're so honored to have you on today, Ms. Tierra Brown. Thank uh, we've, you. We've heard so much about you, and it's very encouraging to know that you are very, very young, while at the same time having made such a great impact in the area of banking. And uh, you said some things that really, I guess, would be inspirational to some of the young people you didn't just start out on the top and a lot of no. times this day <laughs> that we want to come straight out of school and jump right. straight to the top but you said that you started out as a banker uh as a teller and now you're over all the technology in the bank so that that's a wonderful thing yes it's a, it's actually a blessing i've gotten many opportunities um from that one that first um, teller position. And it wasn't easy um, working on the front lines um, during the first of the month, um, opening up bank accounts, meeting quota. It's a lot of work, but honestly, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It gave me that work ethic and that foundation um, that I have now when I'm working um, every day now today, especially from home. Um, it's just creating that um, that tenacity and making sure that you are there to learn whatever lesson a guy has for you at that time. So I, that's my biggest um, inspiration for doing what I do. That, that, that's a blessing. I said, um, I'm from the old school. I still write checks and I still pay with cash. So everybody <laughs> laughs at me because I, I don't like all of the technical side, but I'm realizing that if we didn't have that, then during this time, the church would be in a bad situation trying to, have uh, transactions financially without uh, that side. So we definitely appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you, thank you. So we're gonna dive straight into our dialogue on today. Uh, what we wanna talk about, first of all, I think, we will talk about uh, checking accounts and also savings accounts. What's the difference of them? What's the benefit of them? And what's the purpose of them? So it's always, <laughs> it's always said you have to have a checking and a saving. Um, so the difference between the two is one accumulates interest depending on how much you put into that uh, savings account. And then the other one is for you to do your direct deposit, pay bills out of that. That's your checking account. Your savings account is used to house some money if you're saving for school, a house anything, some new sneakers, who knows, um, you use your savings account for that. And then it has a set, um, uh, sorry, a, a set number, uh, where you can get that, that extra money back. Um, your checking account, I use it to, uh, pay bills, pay tithe, <laughs> pay different things that I have to pay out of my paycheck. 
um, the importance of having that is to create that paper trail. Um, a lot of people, um, deal in cash, I understand that. Um, but having that paper trail creates some, some notoriety when it's time to go get a house or when it's time to go get an apartment, you have to prove your income. And I know with other, um, things like cash app, I know people have cash app, um, they have different, um, banks accounts outside of our major banks. I just say bank at a place where you feel comfortable. Honestly, I'm going to be very candid when I say this. I love federal credit unions. Um, they support you when it's time to borrow. If we ever get to talk about borrowing money in the future for houses, cars, um, for businesses, um, this is a perfect place to create and build that relationship with the bank, letting them know your spending habits. Um, it's a way for you to track your spending habits. I know people will spend anything, um, all of their money on um Amazon or, or anything that they want to get quickly. Um, but it's a perfect way for you to one, build um, a relationship with the bank just in case you would like to borrow. Um, second, um, it's a perfect place for you to um, house money. Um, and besides checking and savings, um, you will get CDs. There's different savings and um, savings um, products that the bank offers for uh, its customers. I have a CD that I have, I put money into and in 15 years, it'll accumulate more money and interest. That's our biggest thing, interest rate. You wanna make sure that when you are getting a savings account that you have an adequate amount of a, a, a interest rate. I think federal credit unions offer bigger interest rates than larger banks. That's another tidbit with going with the federal credit union over a large bank. They give you a little bit more money extra when you put your money in the bank. So that's my biggest thing with checking and savings. So that, that's definitely good to know. So um, the accounts are set up primarily with the trading institutions like the banks or the um, federal credit unions or mm -hmm. the trade, where the more money you put in, the more interest that you accrue. Yep. So if a person puts two or three hundred dollars in there, they are ba barely getting pennies on their savings account versus a person who puts several thousand. Exactly. And it depends on your product. Again, um, if you have $10,000 in the bank, of course, your interest rate is going to be larger, um, especially if we have a certain um, checking product. For example, I know Bank of America offers a, a premium checking account and you have to have a, a closing balance of $10,000 a day. And then you have a 2% um, interest rate on that bank account. So again, it's the more money you put in, the more interest rate will give you to house your money for you. Are the CDs producing any interest now? Because I went to, uh, I guess, renew a CD that I had, and they told me said that they're not really doing a whole lot at that particular institution. So, not right now, we're in murky waters um, in the financial industry because a lot of people want to. They're not dealing in cash like they used to due to COVID nineteen. Um, but we are not. The, the interest rate is not well for CDs anymore. So my biggest. Uh, thing right now is investing in things that will accumulate more money quickly. Um, I've been doing stocks and things like that, but I'm not, I'm not an expert in that, that line of investment. So you have to find someone that's an expert. I've been working with the expert in that. Um, but I do keep the CDs um, just for long-term um, investment opportunities. Um, and CDs are for the long haul. You can't just put money in one year and take it out, you know, in three years and think you're going to get $30,000 after that. You have to continuously invest into that CD to get that return on it. Um, so it's just, and CDs are just like the stock market. You have to be in for the long haul. And if you do take a loss, you'll just take a loss, but then hopefully the market will bounce back. That's definitely good to know. But um, the next question is, um, what is needed to open an account? If somebody was opening a checking account, savings account, what, what is needed to do that? So in order to open an account, you need, um, of course, a, a legible ID, school ID, um, driver's license, um, a non-driver's license ID, um, proof of uh, where you live. Um, so you have like a address just in case your, your ID does not match your address on there. Um, and usually for Bank of America, it's $25 to deposit. Um, so if you have $25 to deposit, to deposit, um, into your account to open up an account. Um, but for federal credit unions, sometimes they do waive, uh, 
opening fees um, for students, people who work for the, the county. It depends on where you live. I know Charlotte Metro, they gave me a free account without me having to deposit anything. Um, it was a promotion um, because I lived in the city of Charlotte at the time. Um, so uh, it depends on where you go. So federal credit unions usually offer specials for people to open accounts. Um, and then bigger banks like PNC, Bank of America, they give you an incentive to open accounts. So for example, uh, PNC was running a special to do $200. Um, they'll deposit $200 was your first direct deposit when you open up an account with you. So there are incentives to opening up a checking account with certain bigger banks. They'll offer you that $300, $300 uh, dollar, uh, uh, deposit once you deposit your first check into that checking account. And then there's no, they'll waive all opening fees for you. So is that, is, is, is there any, I guess, hidden things that they're not telling you why they're giving you the money up front or, <laughs> um so again bigger banks again i <laughs> it depends on what you need bigger banks for because there are more opportunities for atms if you see bank of america you can you can de deposit cash anywhere you can take out cash anywhere without having to accumulate atm fees um the drawback to using bigger banks is again that relationship isn't as close within a federal a federal credit union. At federal credit unions, you create that relationship, and they have better interest rates. Better interest rates when it comes to opening, um, uh, getting a mortgage, getting getting a car loan, anything you can think of as far as borrowing. You'll have a better chance of getting a better interest rate at a credit a federal credit union because it's so small uh with bigger banks again um it depends on your credit score and then you guys are talking about credit scores and things like that um it depends on your credit score you'll still be able to get some of the products but again i always suggest especially for younger people who don't know how to manage i guess their money just yet um i always suggest federal credit unions because then you you have that teller give you a call hey honey um i see that you are overdrafted and i did this happen on purpose you will have that that relationship with the that teller a lot more closely than in bigger banks um, bigger banks, again, we are opening up accounts all the time. Um, again, I know Wells Fargo get, got a bad rep <laughs> with opening up an account. Um, so if you're not comfortable at bigger, larger banks, uh, True Lion is a really great bank too um, that I've used personally for a lot of the things that I've gotten. I got in my um, car through there and I'm getting a mortgage through them. So um, I think federal credit unions are better relationship wise, interest rate interest rate wise. And then is that I think the relationship with the personal banker and understanding how to manage your money is better at smaller banks. Um, you were saying that you're involved in the whole piece as it relates to the technological side. Mm -hmm. Some young people are into using Cash App and depending on how old you are, Cash App is not user friendly if you're under 18. So some of those younger people had to have a Zelle account. Is Zelle the equivalent of Cash App directly through most banks or is it a different system? So Zelle is, is I guess I call it the safer option for Cash App because you're going from bank to bank and you're making sure that the person has a reputable bank and you're able to track, you know, you're able to track where your money is going. And if you know, you send it to someone that didn't provide the service you needed or didn't provide the product that you wanted. You're able to dispute it. With Cash App, there is a lot of fraud, fraudulent things that's happening currently. If you notice, um, people have been closing their Cash App accounts because people have been frauding them for money. Um, they're getting they're getting money taken out of their accounts from Cash App. Um, it's again, it's a quicker way to get money, but I highly suggest people to use Zelle because it's from bank to bank and you're able to link your bank account, um, to that, uh, Zelle account. And then you're able to track where that money goes. And if it doesn't go to a reputable, reputable place, it bounces back. That happened to me one time. So I use personally Zelle over, um, Venmo. I know you're familiar with Venmo and, um, Cash App. Is due to all the fraudulent things that have have been happening um, with uh, people losing money, substantial. Like I know someone who lost about two, three thousand dollars from a Cash App, and they can't get that money back. So it, I highly suggest Zelle over Cash App. That's a good thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> 
we, we talked a little bit earlier about the bank versus the credit union. Uh, and you dealt with some of the services that the bank offers. Um, what would be, I guess, the main service that you would say that you would receive going with a larger bank versus a credit union? So you'll have a different, um, I guess, amount of products. Um, I know larger banks offer, you know, larger loans than federal credit unions. They have a bigger threshold. Um, again, you have access to tons of banks that are, you know, in different countries. For example, I cannot use um, TrueLiant when I went overseas um, because they thought it was fraudulent activity. So working with larger banks, you can't, there are some benefits. So the benefits are, you know, you have access to your money in different countries. You don't have any issues with um, using your bank card when you do travel abroad. Um, they have a, a larger um, threshold for loans. Um, again, Bank of America supplies loans to all the businesses you can think of, all the large churches you can think of. Um, so they have a larger threshold. So their their risk value might be different when it comes to taking out bigger business loans um, because of it. Um, when you're working with the federal credit union, again, they're, they're, they're risk adverse because they're smaller and they don't have as many accounts as they do in larger banks. So again, their threshold for giving you, I guess, thousand dollars versus you needing a hundred thousand dollars might look different um, when you go with a larger bank um and then also larger banks are not also they're not all bad i know tons of tellers in the city of charlotte because bank of america that's the hub where it's is located they have a really educated um young people and people of color especially black people on um, the importance of finance and opening up accounts. And they have done so much charity work as far as making sure pe kids understand um, what finances are. So there are some good likes to, to working with larger banks and their um, engagement with the community and giving them um, different programs to take out loans. I know Wells Fargo offers um, this loan down payment um, program for kids. So I think there are some benefits to using larger banks is because of their bigger threshold for giving out loans and different services they offer. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break here and then we'll come back and we'll deal with the last few questions and then we'll release you, um, I guess, to continue with your day. So <laughs> just a quick break here. Thank you so very much for hanging in there with us. We're getting ready to do the last part of this segment, and I pray that uh, you're enjoying everything thus far, and we'll continue into the culmination of this teaching at this time of sharing. We have, again, Ms. Tierra Brown sharing with us concerning Banking 101. Uh, we dealt with checking accounts, saving accounts. We talked about um, what are some of the needs in, over, in opening an account, and we talked about the overview of the services that banks offer. Now we're getting ready to dive into a few more questions this segment. This uh, segment, we want to start out with the question, how does one choose a bank over a credit union? What are some of the things that they should look for to decide which uh, institution best serves them? You told us that the larger banks, they have more money to offer the credit unions oftentimes they could meet our needs if we don't necessarily uh, need all the bells and whistles. But how would a person kind of decide whether credit union versus bank is best for them? Interest rate. <laughs> That's <Interest> like, <laughs> the, <laughs> well, who gives you the better interest rate, honestly? Um, because that's the money you have to pay back on top of the money you originally borrowed. Um, again, when I am an advocate for credit unions, they have the best interest rates around. Um, even back in 2008, when everyone was like losing their houses and things like that, I remember my mom going to a credit union and actually buying a house in 2008, 2009, uh, when the market was horrible. Um, and it was our little credit union. Um, in Ro I'm originally from Rochester, New York. Um, so it was a little credit union that gave her the best interest and she bought a house when everyone was losing the house. So um, honestly, it's the interest rate. 
Um, but when you are considering um, opening up in a, a bank account or creating a relationship with the bank, you have to ask these certain questions. Um, basically, what are your interest rates? Um, how do you guys um, value like how my interest rate is calculated? Um, what are the payment agreements? You have to ask these questions when you're deciding to borrow with these banks. Um, and then if you're choosing between, you know, a credit union and a larger bank, how do they service you? What does the service look like? Um, I'm, all, I'm big for customer service and making sure that, you know, tellers and, and banking relationship bankers are available when I have questions. How are they handling that relationship with you um, when you go into the bank? Um, are they inquisitive about your needs? Are they they're thinking about all of the facets of your life? If you have children, are they offering products that will help you save money for your children, for yourself, um, for whatever your financial goals are at the time? Um, and usually, again, I had a great I had great experiences with a large bank as well as a credit union. But I, I did create a really great relationship with a, a small credit union in Charlotte. Uh, she asked off the bat, she said, I, I heard you have a daughter. I see you have a daughter. Let's open up this bank account for her. This is this, uh, this type of bank account is going to help her when she get ready to, go to get ready to go to college. This has the better interest rate. Um, I see that you're considering looking for a house. We do offer these products. And I was just in there inquiring about a bank account and she gave me so many products that will fit my personal lifestyle right so you want that personal touch when you're considering um larger banks over a credit union i'm glad that you said that um one of my daughters was with, was with me when i went to a bank on one occasion and she asked me she said why are you going in this was before the pandemic uh became what it was i said i'd like to develop a relationship I used to go to the same branch, the same bank all the time, and I allow them to see my face. I have interaction with them. And then the other day, she was with me as well. And when I pulled up in the drive through because you have to make an appointment in order to go into the lobby now, when they saw me pull up in the drive through they hit the button. They said, hello, Mr. Parent. And they looked at me. I said, that's why I like to go in and talk to them all the time so that I can have that personal interaction. So I can see now even more how important uh, that's that's what you're saying is because if they know you and they know something about you even before asking and you know it's a smaller institution like that they can say okay i'm going to take this time to share this information with you because i see you all the time i talk to you all the time that kind of thing so that that's awesome they, to know. they let you know about what's going on for example i'm familiar with a banker here and my mom she owns a small business too um so that she wasn't familiar with the pandemic um things that were being offered and her banker pulled her aside hey we're offering these things for smaller businesses um just to make sure that you are good and you're able to come out of this unscathed so i really value having a relationship with your banker it's just like having a relationship with your pastor <laughs> or anyone else in your life i think they are optimal for just letting you know giving you a heads up on how to uh, stay afloat or how to get ahead. And even if you're coming up on hard times, having that relationship helps you kind of have those difficult conversations of, hey, I can't pay my mortgage. Do you know anybody or you know any programs that will help with mortgage payment or anything like that? And I've heard credit union um, tellers doing that. And I've done that as a teller. I've literally led people to different assistance when they were coming up on hard times, knowing I created that relationship with them and they wouldn't feel about it and it, even if they're coming up on difficult hard times them just venting to you and you letting them know here the, these are the different resources we do offer as a bank and when you're considering a bank you have to ask hey what are the fees look like what do the fees look like if i overdraft you know that overdraft fee means everything and do you over do you uh, charge me every day that i'm um negative in the negative um some banks got dinged for that i want to say six seven years ago uh, where one bank is one bank that they house in Walmart. They were charging people $39 a day for every day that they're um, negative. And people were going thousand, going into debt by the thousands because of this. And if you can't pay your bills to begin with, and then you have these fees on top of that, that can create a, a avalanche of debt for you and you'll never get out of it. So asking those questions about fees is a big, big question to ask. What those, do, do those fees look like? Um, even when you're, and we can, I know it was a, something going into like the, using your credit cards, we can talk about that, but, <laughs> well, yeah. 
um, when you're using debit versus credit, um, you know, you have to make sure you understand what those fees look like. And a lot of businesses do charge you for using credit over your debit card. But there are also some benefits to using credit when you do have a bank account linked to it. Um, I know True Lion offers deals where they'll give you 20% off, 15 Ten percent off if you go to Harris Teeter and use it use it through credit. So there's ways for you to um, first skip those fees, don't go in overdraft, but also see if there's any benefits to using credit when you are using your banking your banking credit card. I know PNC offers the same deals if you shop at Justice. I know my daughter loves Justice. This little or half for little girls, um, or if you shop at Little Caesars or Pizza Hut, they offer 10% off that pizza. So not only is there a benefit, there's a huge benefit now, depending on your bank account, to using credit over debit, but they're now offering 10% off in different deals um, for whatever, however, or wherever you shop. So I think there are benefits to um, making sure you understand what the fees look like for different bank accounts and making sure that they're one, not overcharging you and, and two, what benefits are they offering you to actually use their, their bank account versus their competitors? Um, I just thought about something, even as you were talking about the benefits of the debit card versus the credit card. Um, what is... I guess an acceptable interest rate should somebody expect to have using a, a, a credit card. I've seen some interest rates like 19% and they get behind, it can go up into 20 something percent. Is that the norm or is it less than that or? Um, anything over 15% to me personally is you're doing a lot and it depends on the credit card you're, you're, using too. Um, again, I don't suggest for young kids, and I'll say this out loud, do not, do not get a department store credit card. Um, the interest rates are always 20% and up. Um, and then there's always an annual fee that you have to pay, like a $50 annual fee, even if you don't use it. Um, it's another <laughs> a credit card, I'd say credit one. It's, it's another credit card. It was one of my first credit cards and, and me being, I guess, a person who have to go through it and I'll let everyone know after. Um, okay. <laughs> I have to, I was baptized by fire. I got my first credit card um, in college and it was credit one. And the interest rate was, I want to say almost 20%. And there was an annual fee of a hundred bucks a year. And they probably changed it since then. I don't know. Um, but I felt like I would never pay off this credit card. And it was only a $300 threshold credit card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I honestly, when you are considering credit cards, first you have to look at your credit score. Hopefully it's over a, a 650 and up. Um, so you can get better interest rates. Um, and then when you're considering banking credit cards, you have to again look at the, the interest rates and what are the rewards. If you have travel, if you travel a lot, I highly suggest getting those travel rewards so you can get that money back in interest. And in so there's benefits to using credit cards you just have to use them the right way um i don't highly suggest sky mileage cards unless you really are an extensive traveler and you use those sky miles um it depends on your lifestyle again um but again the benefits to using credit cards is you you're, you'll be able to one travel i know you cannot rent a car without a credit card <laughs> and you cannot something and, and if you need to get you know gas anything you need to get a credit card is there but you have to use it wisely and look at that interest rate. So when you're considering credit cards and you're considering certain banks, I know the, the federal credit unions offer better rates than bigger banks. Again, I have a credit card with a federal credit union, um, Navy Federal. Um, they're they're really good. I have to pick up. <laughs> Navy, uh, Navy Federal has a really great interest rate and they have a great relationship with their customers. Um, when you call and you lose your card, you don't have any issues with getting through to someone in America or someone who speaks English. Um, that's a big thing. Making sure you understand where their customer service is housed and how that works. It, just in case you come into a bind, you want to be able to talk to someone you understand them understand you and you you will be able to get whatever issue solved um in an adequate amount of time i said you had me nervous when you said your first credit card my first credit card was a discover card I had no job and they offered it to me and was trying to figure out how i was going to pay this thousand dollar balance and i i turned around and, and drove up so 
<laughs> yeah, they gave me three hundred dollars, and then they they turned around and it, after I paid off the little three hundred, they gave me another uh, five hundred. I was like, oh, I'm rich, and I was a, again freshman in college, broke, <laughs> eating noodles and noodles. <laughs> so I thought, you know, five hundred dollars was a lot of money. I was going to wear McDonald's, Chick Fil A, <laughs> yeah. um, getting pizza for the dorm. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it, you have to be smart when you do have these credit cards. And I don't suggest and I don't suggest children getting them until their parent, you know, walk them through the process and when to use it, when not to use it, how interest rates work. And then utilization is a big thing. And that plays a part in your credit re- credit report or your credit score. Um, and that's something you, you guys are probably going to talk about in the next segment. But, yeah, utilization plays a part in that credit score. It's between utilization, payments. And um, if there are any judgments or anything on your um, credit report, but that is a huge thing is utilization. Keeping your utilization down under 10% is the goal. And the utilization is saying that um, your debt ratio kind of piece or. Yep. Yep. So if you have a card for a thousand dollars. Um, don't use 900. <laughs> um, it's, it's best and best practices. And I do it is I'll use probably a hundred of it or less like 50 bucks. And I, and I'll just put, you know, $50 on the card from getting gas and then I pay it before the due date. Um, so you'll just keep your card active. Um, but it's not suggested that you use 50% any, anything over 30% is overkill, um, and it plays a part in your um, monthly credit report score. So if your credit score becomes lower, the more you use and have to pay off. Yep. And then whenever you get ready to borrow, borrows, borrowers, do look at, you know, how much your utilization is and see, you know, besides your payment history, they want to know, okay, are they good with money? You know what I'm saying? So if you're good with money, your utilization wouldn't be too high. And I guess the final question would be uh, the difference between debit cards and credit cards. We talked a little bit about that, but you were saying that the debit card has its benefits where you're using your own money and the credit card, it has its benefits. And you were saying something earlier and I guess you can touch on that as well. Some cards have the sky miles. Some of them have, uh, I guess, cash back off of using yep. certain stores. Um, how would they, I guess, determine whether I use my debit card, credit card, or whether I get this credit card that has sky miles or this credit card that has this store credit, whatever? It's all in your um, lifestyle. I call it a lifestyle choice. So um, I know my my card that's connected to my bank account is considered my debit card, but I can also use it as credit. And that's how I'm able to get the cash back offers. So when I open this, this uh, checking account, they offer this cash back option where if I shop at Harris Teeter or Whole Foods, I'll get 10%, you know, cash back every time I use my credit card. So that kind of determines when I use credit or debit with that certain checking account. Um, but debit, again, it comes directly out. So it's, it's going directly towards your balance. Credit, it takes a couple of days, depending on the merchant, um, to take out of your account. Um, but if you're considering strictly just credit card, not linked to a checking account, um, you have to consider your lifestyle. If you travel a lot, then you might benefit a lot from the Sky Miles credit card. Um, I have a colleague who he's a consultant and he travels every week monday through thursday so he's racked up on sky miles to the point where he went to hawaii for free um (laughs) um, and then um there's credit cards where you just need you know for everyday emergencies you know things do come up if things something come up with the house or anything um you might want to consider just a regular low interest let's say capital one credit card um where depending on your credit score, they'll give you what a balance of 10,000 to, to play with, not play with, but to use um, for emergencies only. Let me make sure I'm clear not to play with. <laughs> um, to use for when you have any emergencies with your car or anything that may come up. And and I suggest for anyone who wants to start with the credit card, Capital One was a great uh, 
company that I've used, uh, Barclays is a really great company, depending on your interest rate and your credit score and your lifestyle. So I highly suggest if you do a lot of traveling, Travel Sky Miles credit card is a perfect way to go. I don't suggest any department credit cards because the interest rate are is is very high. Um, that's one. Two. Um, again, the malls are closing, so it's no point in you getting a a New York and Company card or J.C. Penney or what what is the other uh, place a uh, Dillard's credit card. Unless you really shop there and you really want to uh, utilize their benefits there, I don't see any benefits to get in any department credit cards because of the high interest rate. And then again, th they're closing. So it doesn't make any sense in 2020. Um, <laughs> um, and then using your debit card, again, it's con uh, connected directly to your debit card. So, I mean, to your checking account. So you'll just use it, swipe, and then go on and use your PIN number. Well, I tell you, I definitely um, am grateful to you for all of this information that you share with us even just talking about the credit cards versus the debit cards, that's going to uh, put us in a good place. It's going to give us a good segue as we move into the next session that we'll deal with uh, the next time we come together as far as credit one-on-one. -on -one. So we definitely appreciate you, Ms. Uh, Tierra Brown, for sharing all of this great wisdom and insight with us. Uh, we pray that you continue to uh, matriculate to higher heights and deeper debts, even in the banking arena and in all of your endeavors. Hey, thank you. Appreciate you again. Thank you. thank you for having me. This is great. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Man. Thank you all. We appreciate those of you all that thought it not right but to tune in and to share with us doing Utah. For those of you that don't know what Utah is, it's our umbrella for all of our different youth out, uh, outreaches that would deal with any area of life that they would find themselves dealing with. We deal with millennials, we deal with Generation Z, and also the Alphas. So until next time, you enjoy yourself. Love and peace. Enjoy yourself.